Hello, everyone. Today, I'll talk about sum of squares bounds for the ordering principle. So in this talk, I'll first describe the ordering principle and how we encode the negation of the ordering principle. I'll then describe our results. After that, I'll describe how we prove our sum of squares upper bound. In particular, there are natural candidate pseudo expectation values. Using Chebyshev polynomials, we can break these candidate pseudo expectation values. And from this, we can obtain our sum of squares upper bound. And finally, I'll give a very brief sketch for how we prove our sum of squares lower. Uh, so first, the ordering principle. Uh, so the ordering principle says that if we have n distinct real numbers, a1 through an, one of these numbers must be smaller than all of the other numbers. So as we'll see, and as you may already know, the ordering principle is a very interesting example in proof complexity. As a note, when I say that we prove the, the ordering principle, what I actually mean is that we refute the negation of the ordering principle on n, n elements. Uh, so now let me give a bit of history for what's known about the ordering principle. So the ordering principle was introduced by Krishnamurthy, who conjectured that proving the ordering principle is hard for resolution. Uh, this conjecture was refuted by Stallmark, who showed that there is a resolution proof of size O of n cubed based on induction. That said, Bonnet and Galezi showed that any resolution proof of the ordering principle has width omega n. Uh, later, Galezi and Loria showed that any polynomial calculus proof of the ordering principle has degree omega n. Uh, so here, I, I should note that, as we'll discuss in part two of, these talk, of this talk, these lower bounds are for modifications of the ordering principle. Uh, so why, it, why is this interesting? So some important and very useful results in proof complexity are the following size degree bounds. Uh, for several proof systems, uh, if there's a, a, a proof of relatively small size, then, then it can be transformed into a proof of relatively small width or degree. In particular, in Pagliazzo, Pudlock, and Segal, showed that over Boolean variables, if there's a polynomial calculus proof of size s, then there's a polynomial calculus proof of degree o, roughly o of the square root of n log s. Benson and Wigerson showed that the same proof applies for resolution size and width. Uh, recently, and recently, Atsarias and Hakoniemi showed that the same theorem holds for a sum of squares proofs. So a natural question is whether these size degree bounds are tight or not. Uh, as, uh, so here, observe that we have the following corollary. For resolution, polynomial calculus, and sum of squares, if a set of constant with or, with or degree axioms on n Boolean variables has a polynomial size reputation, then it has a reputation of with degree O of the square root of n log n. Now, as we'll see, the negation of the ordering principle has capital N equals O of little n squared variables. And any resolution or polynomial calculus refutation has with a degree omega of little n, which is equal to omega of the square root of capital N. So this corollary is essentially tight for resolution and polynomial calculus. Now, a natural question, which was asked by Mark Vignels, is, does sum of squares also require degree omega n to refute the negation of the ordering principle? Or is there a smaller degree sum of squares proof? OK. Now, in order to accurately describe our results, I need to describe uh, how we choose an encoding for the negation of the ordering principle. Uh, so how, how can we encode the negation of the ordering principle as a set of axioms. Uh, so here, I'll focus on how we, we can encode it uh, with equations as we're analyzing the sum of squares hierarchy. That said, it can also be, be encoded uh, using, using clauses. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we have variables x, i, j, and we want that x, i, j is 1 if a, i is less than a, j, and x, i, j equals 0 if a, i is bigger than a, j. Uh, so now the axioms that xij squared equals xij uh, enforce that everything is 0 or 1. Uh, the axioms that xij plus xji equals 1 
ensures that either AI is less than AJ or AJ is less than AI, but not both. The axioms that XIJ times XJK times XKI ensure that we can't have AI is less than AJ, AJ is less than AK, and AK is less than AI. In other words, uh, we have that transitivity holds. And finally, the axioms that for each J and N, the product over I not equal to J of XJI equals zero. Uh, this says that for each J, there must be an, an I such that AI is less than AJ. Uh, in other words, AJ is not min the minimum element. So in this way, we can encode the negation of the ordering principle as, as, as a set of equations. OK, uh, however, uh, an issue with, with this encoding is that here, the, the non-minimality axioms have width or degree n. So an omega n width degree lower bound is trivial. As, so one fix for this which was used by Bonet and Galezi, is to use auxiliary, auxiliary variables to break up the non-minimality axioms into axioms with constant width. Another fix, which was used by Galezi and Loria, is to instead consider the graph ordering principle on expanded graphs, uh, where the graph ordering principle says that if we have a graph G on N vertices uh, with no isolated vertices, if we assign a distinct real number AI to each vertex VI, there must be some vertex which has a smaller number uh, than all of its neighbors. So if we consider the, the negation of the graph ordering principle, then, then all the axioms are the same, except that for the non-minimality axioms, for each J, instead of considering all I not equal to J, we only consider the i such that vi is adjacent to vj. And if every vertex of the graph G is constant degree, then all of these axioms uh, have constant degree uh, or width. Although here, uh, here we'll use a different modification of the encoding for, uh, for sum of squares. So, so sum of squares has a very useful power which resolution and polynomial calculus do not have. In particular, sum of squares uses the fact that squares are non-negative over the real numbers. And this allows us to encode the non-minimality axioms uh, using degree two equations. In particular, for each j, we create an auxiliary variable zj, and we take the axiom that the sum over i not equal to j of xij is one plus zj squared. Uh, this forces at least one xij to be one, which implies that aj is not the minimal element. Okay, so, so, he, so here's our final set of, of equations encoding the negation of the ordering principle for sum of squares. Uh, we have the same pairwise ordering and transitivity axioms as before, and then for the non-minimality axioms, we had that for each j, the sum over i not equal to j of xij is 1 plus dj squared. Okay, so, so now that we've described how we encode the negation of the ordering principle, we can describe our results. So we prove both the sum of squares upper bound and the sum of squares lower bound. For the sum of squares upper bound, we show that there's a degree O of the square root of n times log n sum of squares proof of the ordering principle. For the lower bound, we show that for all epsilon bigger than zero, any sum of squares proof of the ordering principle has degree omega of n to the one half minus epsilon. So this upper bound is essentially tight. So I, I should note that our upper bound is robust in the following sense. So previously, we described uh, several different ways of encoding the non-minimality axioms. So it can be shown that, that, that the sum of square hierarchy can deduce our encoding of the non-minimality axioms from these other low degree encodings of the non-minimality axioms, which means that, that our upper bound applies to all the low, low degree encodings that we've seen. 
On the other hand, our sum of squares lower bound is delicate. It only applies to our specific encoding of the ordering principle. In particular, it does not apply to the graph ordering principle. As, so, so this is this is fine, uh, except that if we want to connect this to the size degree bounds, which were shown for su for sum of squares by Atsurius and Hakoniemi, we can't connect it as is because the size degree bounds are for Boolean variables, and our encoding uses non-Boolean auxiliary variables uh, zj. So, uh, th so th this can be fixed as follows. We can fix it by replacing each zj squared with the sum of m uh, Boolean auxiliary variables, uh, zj, k. So the, the resulting non-minimality axioms are that for each j, the sum over i not equal to j of xij is 1 plus the sum from k equals 1 to m of zjk squared, where zjk are, where the zjk are Boolean auxiliary variables. Now, as I said before, our sum of squares lower bound is, is delicate. It actually does not directly imply a lower bound for this encoding with Boolean auxiliary, auxiliary variables. Uh, that said, if m is at least n to the three halves, then the same proof techniques can be used. So we have we have a modified lower bound that for all m, as long as m is at least n to the three halves, our lower bound still holds if we replace each zj squared with the sum of m Boolean auxiliary variables. Uh, as a note, this condition on m is likely an artifact of the current proof. I believe that as long as m is at least n minus 2, this should be sufficient. OK, so, uh, so, ne so now we, we can connect our results to the size degree bounds for sum of squares. Uh, so, so recall that a corollary of Atzerias and Hakoniemi's results is that for Boolean variables, if there's a polynomial size S SOS reputation, then there's a degree O of the square root of n log n sum of squares reputation. So the, the negation of the ordering principle has capital N equals omega of little n squared variables. And, there, and there's an O of the square root of little n log, log of little n, which is equal to O of the fourth root of capital N times log of capital N degree refutation. So the ordering principle does not give a tight example for this corollary. Uh, that said, for all epsilon bigger than zero, the ordering principle does give a system of axioms on capital N equals O of little n to the 2.5 Boolean variables, such that there's a polynomial size refutation. And any sum of squares refutation has degree omega of little n to the 1 half minus epsilon, which is equal to omega of capital N to the 1 fifth minus epsilon, which means that this, incorrela this corollary can't be improved by too much. As a note, I believe we should be able to take capital N equals O of little n squared, in which case this, this would be omega of capital N to the one fourth minus epsilon. Okay, so, so, so now I'll describe how we prove our sum of squares upper bound. So, so for this, I actually need to, to describe what sum of squares refutations are. So, so given a set of axioms SI equals zero, where each SI is a polynomial, a degree D sum of squares or po positive Stellenzatz refutation is an equality of the form minus one equals the sum over I of FI times SI plus the sum over J of DJ squared, where for all I, the degree of F of I plus the degree of S of I of SI is at most D. And for all J, the degree, the degree of gj is at most d over 2. So as a note, this is a refutation because uh, if all the si's are 0, then uh, the sum over i of fi times si is 0. And the, the, degree, the sum over j of gj squared uh, has to be non-negative. So this can't possibly equal minus 1. 
And now here, instead of trying to construct such an equality directly, I will analyze the dual, which is pseudo expectation values. Okay, so, uh, so given a set of axioms SI equals zero, degree D pseudo expectation values are a linear map uh, E tilde from polynomials of degree at most D to the real numbers, such that the pseudo expectation value of one is one. For all polynomials f and all i, the pseudo expectation value of f times si is zero whenever the degree of f plus the degree of si is at most d. And for all polynomials g, the pseudo expectation value of g squared is non negative whenever the degree of g is at most d over 2. So it turns out that as long as strong duality holds, which is almost always, there is a degree d sum of squares refutation if and only if there are no degree D pseudo expectation values. Uh, so here what we'll do is we'll construct candidate pseudo expectation values E tilde N. We'll analyze when they fail and we'll use this failure as a guide to construct an SOS reputation. So how can we, how can we construct these candidate pseudo expectation values? Uh, so the idea is that if, if, for, the, for the XIJ variables, uh, for a polynomial P on the xij variables, we'll take the pseudo tilde en of P to be the expectation over a random ordering uh, of P. Uh, so for example, e tilde n of x12 is one half, uh, because if we take a random ordering, with probability one half, a1 will be less than a2, and with probability one half, a2 will be less than a1. Uh, similarly, e tilde n of x12 times x34 is one fourth, because if we take a random ordering, the probability that a1 is less than a2 and a3 is less than a4 is one fourth. And if we look at e tilde n of x12 times x13, uh, this is one third, because the probability that a1 comes first out of a1, a2, and a3 is one third. Uh, and similarly, uh, e tilde n of x12 times x23 is one sixth, as the probability that a1 is less than a2, which, which is, less than, is less than a3, is one sixth. Okay, now how do we handle the auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary zj variables? So the idea here is that uh, since our equations only involve zj squared, each zj can be either positive or negative. So if, uh, if any zj appears with an odd power, uh, we, take, we take the pseudo expectation value to be zero. And then uh, zj squared is the sum over i naught equal to j of xij minus one. So each zj to an even power gives us a polynomial in the xij variables, which we already know how to handle. Uh, so our final candidate pseudo expectation values are as follows. So it, uh, if P is a polynomial in the xij variables, uh, e tilde n of P is the expected value of P over a random ordering of a1 through an. Uh, whenever n e z j appears to an odd power, e tilde n of this term is zero. And then Whenever we have zj squared, we replace it with the sum over i not equal to j of xij uh, minus one and compute uh, e tilde n of that. And then the key question is, does e tilde n give valid degree d uh, pseudo expectation values? Okay, so, uh, so we'll now describe how to break these candidate pseudo expectation values. And so, uh, so I claim that due to the way e tilde n was constructed, for any axiom si equals zero and any polynomial f, e tilde n of f times si equals zero. Uh, so this means that in order to show that e tilde n does not give valid degree d pseudo expectation values, we need to find the polynomial h of degree at most d over two, such that e tilde n of h squared is less than zero. Uh, so in order to do this, uh, let's consider polynomials H 
which only depend on the number of elements smaller than a1. So take wj equals zj squared uh, to, uh, equals the sum over i not equal to j of xij minus 1. And then take h to be z1 times g of w1. And, uh, so now e tilde n of h squared is e tilde n of w1 times g of w1 squared. Uh, and now observe, so w1 is the number of elements which are smaller than a1 minus 1. So over a random ordering, w1 is equally likely to take any integer value between minus 1 and n minus 2. Uh, so this means it's sufficient to construct a polynomial g of w1 so that the sum from w1 equals minus 1 to n minus 2 of w1 times g of w1 squared is less than 0. Okay, yeah. So here we're just, so again, we're trying to construct g so that the sum from w1 equals minus 1 to n minus 2 of w1 times g of w1 squared is less than 0. And so one way to do this would be to construct g so that g of minus 1 is non-zero, and g of w1 is 0 for every integer between 0 and n minus 2. Uh, however, uh, this would require g to have degree at least n minus 1, which is too high. Uh, that said, uh, having, it be zero, having g be 0 on all these points is overkill. It's sufficient if g of minus 1 has, uh, has large magnitude, and, and g of w1 is bounded for all w1 in the interval from 0 to n minus 2. And, and for this, we can use Chebyshev polynomials. It, it can be shown that if we use Chebyshev polynomials of degree uh, roughly the square root of n times log base 2 of n, uh, that, uh, that then we can construct such a polynomial g and break our candidate pseudo expectation values. Okay, and then uh, how, uh, how do we actually obtain a sum of squares refutation for this? Uh, so, so the idea here is as follows. I, I, I claim that for any, uh, for any polynomial p in the xij variables, which is symmetric under permutations of, of 1 through n, uh, the value of p is fixed by the, by the pairwise ordering and transitivity axioms. Uh, more precisely, p minus e tilde n of p is in the ideal generated uh, by these axioms. Uh, so a corollary of this is if we, uh, if we take hj to be zj times g of wj, then if we look at uh, the sum, the sum for, over j of hj squared minus e tilde n of the sum over j of hj squared, uh, this is in the ide ideal generated by the axioms. And then uh, uh, th this gives us an equality that the sum over j of hj squared plus the sum over i of fi times si for some uh, polynomials fi is equal to e tilde n of the sum over j of hj squared, which because of the way we constructed g, uh, this is less than zero, and this gives us our sum of squares reputation. Okay, so I, uh, as you might imagine, uh, uh, proving the sum of squares lower bound is considerably tougher. I'll now give a very brief sketch for how we prove the sum of squares lower bound. Uh, so the key idea is that uh, 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 proving the lower bound can be reduced to, to analyzing a problem on a single variable. So if we define omega nd to be the distribution on the variable u, uh, where the probability that u equals k is n minus k minus 1 choose d minus 1 uh, divided by n choose d. Uh, so as, as a note, this distribution corresponds to placing n minus d balls in d labeled bins and counting the number of balls in the first bin. 
uh, uh, so then uh, then we can show that if uh, if our candidate pseudo expectation values fail, uh, uh, then there's a polynomial G star of degree at most D uh, such that the expected value over this distribution of U minus one times G star of U squared is less than zero. And then to prove that our Kansas pseudo expectation values are valid, we prove that there is no such G star. Okay, so, uh, so how do we prove this theorem? That, uh, so, pro so proving this theorem is, is subtle and takes several steps. Uh, so, uh, so the first step is that we is that we use symmetry to reduce to reduce the case where everything is symmetric under permutations of all but the first D two indices. Uh, as a note, we take D two to be somewhat larger than D for technical reasons. Uh, after that, uh, we break everything up based on the ordering of the elements a one through a D two. Without loss of generality, we can assume a1 is less than a2 is less than dot 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 is less than a d2. Uh, after that, uh, uh, since, the, uh, since we have this ordering and everything is symmetric under permutations of all but the first d2 elements, uh, this allows us to change to the variables u, u0, u1, uh, dot dot dot, uh, ud2 where ui is the number of elements between ai and ai plus one. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, finally we take an expectation over, uh, for a fixed u naught, we take an expectation over u1 through ud2. This puts everything in terms of u naught. And after some further ma manipulation, uh, this gives us our polynomial uh, g star of u naught. Okay, so if uh, if you have if uh, if you'd like to know more about this or anything which I've discussed so far, uh, ask ask me or read the paper. So I'll I'll end by giving two uh, two open problems. As as so the, so the first natural open problem is, uh, is there a different set of equations uh, showing that the size degree bounds for sum of squares on Boolean variables are tight, or is it possible to improve these bounds? Uh, and second, can we prove sum of squares lower bounds for the graph ordering principle? So I'll, I'll, I'll end here. Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you very much for your attention.